Our book is Mickey Gorman, The Amazing Runner by John Bertoletti. In the autumn of 1976, Mickey Gorman stood on the Ver Verrazano Narrows Bridge with a huge group of other athletes. The thousands of runners, mostly men, were gathered at the starting line of the New York City Marathon. A marathon is a 26.2 mile running race. One male runner looked over and muttered to himself, why even bother, lady? Mickey was just over five feet tall and weighed less than 90 pounds. The runner had no idea that the woman he snickered at was one of the top runners in the world. Then the race began. The runner surged forward. Mickey Gorman confidently took off, feeling relaxed. It would be a day she'd never forget. Mickey Gorman was an unlikely American sports star. Her parents were Japanese. In 1935, when Mickey was born, they were living in China. During World War II, the family moved back to Japan. The United States was fighting Japan in the war at the time. After the war, an American army officer in Japan hired Mickey to be a nanny for his children. In time, Mickey wanted to move to the United States. With the help of the officer, she moved to the United States in 1964. She went to school in Pennsylvania and then worked in an office for several years. In the late 1960s, Mickey met Michael Gorman and they were married. The couple moved to Los Angeles and soon had a daughter. United States flag and the Japanese flag. Mickey did not speak much English and she was shy. She mainly stayed in her home and took care of her baby. Why don't you go out and do some things, her husband asked. Mickey wasn't sure what she wanted to do. Her husband kept encouraging her to take up a hobby or meet new people. Mickey had said that she wished her body were a little stronger. Michael Gorman suggested she join the Los Angeles Athletic Club. Mickey found the exercise classes she took at the club boring. One time, she decided to run on the track. In that moment, Mickey's life changed. She enjoyed running immediately and felt comfortable doing it. She began to enter races at the club and she and was often the only woman in those races. One day, Mickey was lining up to run an indoor race at the club. She was the only woman at the starting line. One of the male racers glared at her and said, What are you doing here? Are you trying to compete with men? Mickey was a little surprised at first. The more she thought about his comment, though, the angrier she became. I'm going to beat him, she thought to herself, and she did. Did she quit racing because most runners back then were men? No. She kept at it. Her husband and others helped her because they kept encouraging her to run. In April of 1973, Mickey was still running indoor races at the Los Angeles Athletic Club. Some of the coaches at the club started to talk to Mickey. They encouraged her to run some outdoor races and to compete in some races other than those held at the club. She said she was willing to consider running in some other races. Since she was excellent at running long distances, one of her friends even suggested that she run in the legendary Boston Marathon. The mar marathon is an especially hard race since it's so long, 26.2 miles. Runners become extremely tired and sore when attempting to run that far, and many quit before finishing. Mickey decided to give it a shot she would try to run a marathon. Mickey and her husband and coach had a meeting. They decided that she would run the Culver City Marathon in California near Los Angeles. The race would be run in December of 1973. Running a marathon requires a lot of preparation. 
Runners need to build up their body strength and endurance to run that long a distance, and this takes time. Mickey began to take long runs to prepare her body. Mickey was concerned because she'd never run a marathon before. She and her coach decided that she could practice for the Culver City Marathon by running in different marathon. They saw that one would be held in a town nearby. They planned for Mickey to run about half of that race and see how she felt. The race began. Mickey began to run. She had finished about half the race. She slowed down to stop, just like she and her coach had planned. When she did this, many of the fans watching the race told her that she was ahead of all the other women in the race. You can't stop now, the fans said, and so Mickey kept going. Mickey not only finished the race, but she was the first female winner. Her time was three hours and 30 minutes, which was very good. She was thrilled to have done so well in her very first marathon. Mickey felt confident as she began the Culver City Marathon on December 2nd, 1973. As the race continued, she stayed strong and ran well. She led all the other women runners mile after mile. When she neared the finish line, the crowd began to cheer. When the fans looked at the official time clock of the race, they gasped. It read two hours, 46 minutes, 36 seconds. That's two hours. 46 minutes, 36 seconds. This time broke the American women's marathon record by a full two minutes. The world record, record at the time was two hours, 46 minutes, 30 seconds. So Mickey was only seven seconds away from setting a new world record. The small 38-year-old woman had stunned the racing world. She had come out of nowhere to almost set a new world record. Now Mickey felt prepared to run the legendary Boston Marathon. It was considered the most famous marathon race and many runners dreamed of winning it. The race, the race was run in April, 1974. Many people who followed the sport of long distance running wondered if Mickey's victory in Culver City Marathon was just a fluke. Maybe she just got lucky that day, they thought. Perhaps the other woman runners didn't feel that well that day. All of those critics were quieted once they saw Mickey run. She dominated the other women runners and won the women's 1974 Boston Marathon by six minutes. Her time was an outstanding two hours, 47 minutes, 11 seconds. That is the only race in which I didn't feel nervous because I knew I was going to win, Mickey said. Mickey had quickly become one of the top female runners in the world. Fans and sports writers were amazed that the woman who did not start running until she was 33 years old could become one of the world's top runners. Another very popular marathon in the United States is the New York City Marathon. The organizers of the race wanted to make it to run in 1976. That's the year the New York Mar the New York City Marathon they said would be special. New York City is made up of five boroughs or sections, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, Staten Island and the Bronx. For the first time the runners would pass through all five of the boroughs as they raced. Mickey liked the idea and decided to run. Oh no.